Hello everyone and welcome, I am Max and I will try to answer the question which filament diameter has the most desirable characteristics. I know this is a sensitive subject and um, I will try to approach this as scientific as possible and to give a balanced view on this matter. So how can we compare two filament diameters? Well I devised a small experiment for this. Uh, I used a Titan extruder which has a 3 to 1 gear ratio, this means it can handle both filament diameters and use a volcano hot end which was specifically designed to achieve a high throughput of filament. The uh, experiment process itself is quite straightforward. I marked the filament at a certain set point, then extruded 15 centimeters of filament into free air and then re-measured the filament at the set point and as such calibrated the extruder steps per millimeter value. As filament I chose PLA because it has a slightly lower thermal conductivity compared to ABS and PETG so we're working here with basically the worst filament when it comes to heat transfer. I also wanted to compare nozzle sizes. I wanted to see if a nozzle size makes any influence on the throughput. So um, I needed a reference value for this and um, I'm going to use the volumetric flow rate which is quite straightforward to calculate. You multiply the layer height z times the extrusion width y times the print speed x dot. The print speed is in millimeters per second the layer height also in millimeters and the extrusion width as well in millimeters so we would get cubic millimeters per second so a volume per time. I know this is not a value which we work with quite often in 3D printing community the volumetric flow rate so here are some reference points for you the 0.4 millimeter nozzle printing at an 0.2 millimeter layer height uh, at 60 millimeters per second printing speed is about 5 cubic millimeters per second. If we increase our nozzle size to an 0.8 millimeter nozzle printing and an 0.4 millimeter layer height, we already would get 19 cubic millimeters per second. And the 1 millimeter nozzle printing and 0.5 millimeter layer height would print at, at 60 millimeters per second, 30 cubic millimeters per second uh, filament. This is an insane amount. You have to think if we usually print an 0.4 millimeter nozzle at an 0.2 millimeter layer height, we extrude about five cubic millimeters per second of filament. And a one millimeter nozzle printing at the same speed with an 0.5 millimeter layer height already would six times push as much filament through the nozzle. So that's insane amount of filament per time. Okay, let's get to the results. As already mentioned, I logged the steps per millimeter value for every variable I changed. So this means the variables are the temperature, in this case from 230 degrees to 260 degrees in 10 degrees increments. I also changed the volumetric flow rate, so indirectly our printing speed. Um, we're looking here at an 0.8 millimeter nozzle printing at an 0.4 millimeter layer height. I think you already forgot the graph from before, but so I'm going to give you uh, the uh, reference points for these volumetric flow rates. This is 30 millimeters per second, this is 45 millimeters per second, this is 60 millimeters per second, and 75 millimeters per second. As we can see, if we stay below our about 15 cubic millimeters per second, we have a steady steps per millimeter value, which is around 825. And this is regardless of temperature. Then if we ex exceed a certain threshold, which is uh, between about 15 and 20 cubic millimeters per second, we start having a linear behavior, behavior with uh, the steps per millimeter value. As we increase, however, the, the temperature, the uh, steps per millimeter value decrease. Uh, this is quite evident if we even go further up in the volumetric flow rate. Um, but the gradient also becomes more, uh, becomes higher. So the, the angle is steeper. Um, so now people will say, well, maybe your extruder starts skipping steps. No, the Titan extruder does not skip steps. <laughs> um, the thing I think happened here is that the hop gear, as it starts biting into the filament, and as the pressure increases inside the hot end, because we're printing at a low uh, temperature, in air quotes, yeah, low temperature, um, but the, the volumetric flow rate is so high that the filament probably doesn't ever reach a certain temperature. So you need a lot more pressure to push that unmelted basically filament through the nozzle, which is not true that it's unmelted, but lower melted or less melted filament through the nozzle. 
and as the filament, uh, the hop gear tried to compensate for that, it bites into the filament and doesn't grind it, but it's close to it, so it starts flexing the filaments ever so slightly. So the, the PLA just gives in ever so slightly uh, to that um, in, insane pressure it needs to be in, in, ex extruded. So that's why you need just more steps if you extrude at a lower temperature with a high volumetric flow rate. So this was for a 3 millimeter filament and an 0.8 millimeter nozzle. So remember 15 cubic millimeters per second, steady state 825 steps per millimeter. So one millimeter nozzle, three millimeter filament. So we're increasing the nozzle size, also the layer height to an 0.5 millimeter layer height. And here we have 15 cubic millimeters per second, 20, 25, and 30. These would equate to 30 millimeters per second, 40 millimeters per second, 50 millimeters per second and 60 millimeters per second. Again, same temperatures um, and which is which is really interesting, 15 cubic millimeters per second. Yep, steady state right here. 825 steps per millimeter value. And we have our steady state right here. As we increase uh, the volumetric flow rate, we start seeing again the linear behavior. So uh, we need a higher amount, higher, higher pressure basically. Let's get to the 1.75 millimeter filament, 0.8 millimeter nozzle, 1.75 millimeter filament, 0.4 millimeter layer height, same volumetric flow rate as for the 3 millimeter filament, but we can see here we don't have a steady state as we do for the 3 millimeter filament. Um, we have this kind of erratic behavior from within 9.6. It stays around 815 steps per millimeter value, and then starts suddenly decreasing as we increase to the temperature. We instantly already have a linear behavior for the 14.4, and well, obviously for the 19.2 and 24, that doesn't change neither for the three millimeter nor for the 1.75. Um, which is interesting though to note is that we need less steps, so apparently maybe less pressure um, where this ex exactly comes from. I don't want to hypothesize right now um, because I don't have, to be honest, a, a good hypothesis about it. Um, well, the only thing we should remember is that it instantly has a linear behavior, the 1.75 for the one millimeter, uh, for the 0.8 millimeter nozzle, and so also for the one millimeter nozzle, we have also linear behavior, which is really extreme for the 30 right here. You can see the gradient into it. Um, but again, here um, kind of this erratic behavior, not very, you know, no steady state, no clear linear functions we can approximate to these, to our, to our, um, to the points uh, of the steps per millimeter value to our measured points so okay now you're gonna say which filament is better and I from these two gra from these four graphs I I couldn't say um, I saw obviously the filament coming out of the nozzle so I could objectively say well uh, this is a filament you could work with this is not and then so on and so forth but you wouldn't probably wouldn't take my word for it if I just told you which uh, volumetric flow rate would at work at which temperature. So I tried to look at a different value and I looked at the so-called extradate swell or dye swell. This is a phenomenon that happens when you um, print or use a liquid and push it through an orifice. As you increase obviously the speed you need more of also more pressure and uh, what happens with the molecular chains of the polymer is as they're experiencing this kind of pressure they get compressed and then pushed through this orifice to the nozzle and then as they exit the nozzle this pressure releases and the filament starts expanding so you wouldn't actually get an 0.4 millimeter um, filament or extruded filament out of your nozzle uh, because due to the extrudate well so you would get probably something around 0 0.5, 0 0.6, depending on the volumetric flow rate, temperature, and speed, or basically speed you're pushing the filament through it. Okay, so what I did is uh, I extruded the filament for the first part and like um, extruded 15 centimeters, as you know, and then measured um, the, the diameter of the extruded filament and took then some averages. I know some people are going to say, well, you extrude it into free air and then the filament gets elongated as it's being extruded and drops to the ground. Uh, yes, this is true, but I still think it was a reference value which is quite worth to look at. Also, I didn't measure the first part where the filament may be being overheated, so rather I looked, uh, measured the, the, the last filament that came out and then took an average at certain set points. So, 0.8 millimeter nozzle, 3 millimeter filament, 
exudates well again over temperature same volumetric flow rates obviously i just uh, measured the filament that came out i didn't change anything else and as you can see linear behavior which is quite interesting so as we increase the temperature the filament gets softer and um, it will probably then also elongate it elongate longer and so on and so forth but now you're going to say well what is a good exudate so 100 mm, percent no not really um, we can actually go up to 140 with an 0.8 millimeter nozzle and that regardless of filament so we're gonna the exudate swell will have a clear cut line at 140 percent for the 0.8 millimeter nozzle and 120 percent which one we're gonna see later for the one millimeter nozzle but there is a clear cut line for both filaments so we're just gonna look at this line here 140 percent and see that we can actually extrude again the 14.4 9.6 well without any issues and the 19.2 is also very doable increase the temperature slightly by 10 degrees and you're gonna be fine at the one millimeter nozzle our as i already mentioned the extra rate swell should not exceed 120 percent after that everything became unprintable and um, we can see here that the 15 cubic millimeters per second is fine you can print it at 230 without any issues don't have to go hotter than that but for the 20 you should actually go to up to 250 and if we compare that back to the 0.8 millimeter nozzle we see you only need 240 here for the nearly the same amount of volumetric flow rate so the 0.8 millimeter nozzle works slightly better than the one millimeter nozzle why is that so no, I don't know. A lot of hypotheses you can do it right now. I don't want to get into too much speculation here. I'll try to keep to graphs and kind of facts as much as possible. Okay, so 1.75, 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Look at those lines. Beautiful, aren't they beautiful? Those lines. I love these lines. How they space between each other. The gradient is really low. I I don't know why, but I just I, for the 1.75, I love these graphs. Oh, these functions, these linear functions, but. Unfortunately, if you look at the extra rate swell, 140% 0.8 millimeter nozzle, we can see here that 14.4 is fine, but we can not really print a 19.2 cubic millimeters per second. The extra rate swell was just too big, and um, the, the polymer that came out or the extruded filament that came out was basically unprintable, to be honest. Look at these 180% extra rate swell at 230 degrees Celsius. That's insane. Huh? Um, one millimeter nozzle, as you would expect didn't work better either actually worse so for the 1.75 it did the same thing 0.8 just worked better and then the one millimeter nozzle you can see here that the 15 cubic millimeters per second even there we need a slightly higher temperature at 240 degrees for the 120 exudates well remember again one millimeter nozzle 120 percent was fine 0.8 140 percent was fine why that exactly is so i don't know it's just what i observed when the filament came out so now okay now some people are going to be probably mad watching this video saying well i'm now i endorse gonna endorse three millimeter filament yes i have to this is basic observed science experiments i did the three millimeter just work better if you want to push filament through a nozzle at a high speed so high volumetric flow rate three millimeter filament is just better and the best one what we had is the 0.8 millimeter nozzle with a three millimeter filament we can print at a certainly lowish temperature already 20 cubic millimeters per second it got worse with the one millimeter nozzle as we can see here again 250 degrees celsius you need slightly more heat to to extrude that kind of filament 1.75 worked only up until 15 cubic millimeters per second for the 0.8 millimeter nozzle and for the one millimeter nozzle it was especially bad with you need you needed a higher temperature just to extrude the 15 cubic millimeters per second so how is that so is there any point where i could say well this makes it more this makes it evident you know well there are you look at the dwell time so the time the filament stays before it's being extruded a three millimeter filament stays inside the hot end three times longer than the 1.75. Yes, these, con these two curves then converge towards a higher volumetric flow rate, but still every time it's three times longer inside the filament. Yeah? And that means at a high volumetric flow rate where basically filament stays in here, I have to, have to look it up, but a second or so, while here it stays um, like seven seconds inside. So it is, it, it is quite a big difference. And there is some math behind it that 
could support their theory. So looking at the area ratio, we have about 50% more surface area for the uh, three millimeter filament. Uh, the volume is nearly three times as much, uh, but leave that out. If you look at basic convective heat transfer, okay? Now people who, who studied heat transfer are gonna be mad that I'm showing this simple introduction formula. Yes, it's not a formula we can use to 100%, but it's a good reference formula we can use for heat transfer. It's the energy per time, not the watts per time we have to put in to um, compensate for a temperature gradient. And the surface area is a quite important one. So yes, the filament here has a higher 50% more surface area, meaning you need more energy per time to put in. However, we have three times as much time to put in this kind of energy. So there is some, some indication why three millimeter filament is actually better when it comes to a high volumetric flow rate. So three millimeter filament is, from, is the, the winner in this case. Well, but the 1.75 has still its advantages and it, that comes in when you go to a low volumetric flow rate. If you remember around five cubic millimeters per second is, um, is in 0.4 millimeter nozzle printing at an 0.2 millimeter layer height at 60 millimeters per second. So let's say you go lower than that. You want to print at really fine details, 0.2 millimeter uh, nozzle and then printing at 0.1 millimeter layer height. So really fine detail. Then you would have a three millimeter filament that would stay in probably, and that this goes potentially up. So it stays in 90, 20, 100 seconds inside the, 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 uh, the heater block, which would then bake the filament. Um, which is really unnecessary. So if you want to go into fine detail, 1.75 is for me the clear winner. If you want to go towards a high volumetric flow rate, then you have to go with a three millimeter filament. And there are some indications that certain companies are working with um, six millimeter filament just to achieve a higher throughput. Okay, so I hope you learned something today and you kind of enjoyed watching this video. This was a one shot video, so excuse any choppy um, speaking of my part, uh, my, the next video I will do is about the future of 3D printing. I uh, hope to see you then. See you next time. Bye.